So hey guys, Liam here from Primal Nomad, I hope you're doing well. Um, it's a little bit of a different video today, actually, as you can probably tell from the, the title of, of it, no doubt. Um, essentially, I just wanted to give a little bit of an explanation as to exactly what's happened. A few of you who follow me on Instagram closely will have seen my stories and you know posts to suggest that I'd been in hospital, and that's exactly what's happened. Unfortunately, I had a really serious fall about uh, probably about 12 or between 12 and 15 days ago I can't remember the exact uh, the exact scenario of when it happened um, but essentially I fell about three stories which is around 40 odd feet um, so incredibly lucky to be here actually and to be talking and to be able to you know walk albeit kind of a, a slow hobble at the moment so I really just wanted to take this opportunity, like I said, to come out and explain it to you guys, um, explain that I'm okay, and obviously things are going to be a little bit slower for Primal Nomad. Um, filming's quite difficult. You can see that my arm's in a sling here, and that's because I've actually really damaged the scapula on my shoulder. When I fell, I landed on a metal fence, and uh, that... Uh, went through me in quite a few places but luckily my shoulder blade took the grunt of the blow which deflected me off the fence and then I hit the floor. I don't remember what happened um, and I'm quite glad that I don't if I'm honest but what I am grateful for and I, and I do remember is all the great support I had at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford and all of my friends, my loved ones and you know people around me who really made the journey a lot easier for me. And I just wanted the opportunity to come up here and do something familiar to myself and relax with the fire. Um, I got brought up here by a really good friend, John, because uh, obviously I'm completely out of action for driving. And I thought I'd take this opportunity not only to explain uh, this unfortunate circumstance to you guys, but to just, you know, come back and ground myself a little bit with nature, um, something I enjoy, you know, at the best of times it's, it's one of my favorite things to do come out here and also i wanted to bring along with me uh, probably the one opportunity i'll bring it along with me empty a wee sport uh, raccoon bag and it's a 45 liter bag uh, and i know a lot of you guys have wanted to see a review of it um, especially just how it comes so what i thought i'd do is bring it up with me empty and go through it just with you guys all the different attachments that I have for it and what I think about it a year later or about a year and a half actually I've had it now um, so we'll quickly and probably shortly get on to looking at a review of that but for now like I said just want to sit here relax with the fire and be grateful for being here so I really guess I want to say just stay tuned I'm going to be releasing a load of footage that I gained up over the last year while I've been building my Navara and that always was the intention, it's uh, to kind of trickle through releasing it. So I guess there might be a, a little bit of a delay on some bushcraft content, but if you stick with it, no doubt, hopefully very soon I'll have the truck fully finished and I'll be able to go out and explore with you guys and look forward really to the next part of the adventure. So thanks for listening guys. So I'm feeling really blessed to kind of be here actually. It's a strange feeling, I wasn't quite sure what had happened. Um, I don't remember the fall. Uh, I just know it was obviously very, very serious. Um, someone was there with me uh, through all of it and I'm eternally grateful to them. Basically I impaled myself through my pectoral muscle here uh, and it came out just a bit higher. It went through my chin underneath and blew my jaw to bits. Uh, went through my shoulder and one went through my kind of back and did some damage to some ribs. Obviously the best outcome I could have ever asked for really because it could have been so easily a fall that led to my death, um, a fall that led to paralysis, a fall that led to mental connotations like you know I, I could have easily been had a speech impairment or a memory impairment but luckily the only thing I don't remember is falling so yeah like I said just feeling really blessed to be here and want to kind of make a resolution to myself to uh make the most of it and as I've said to a few people since coming out it's all about making memories not planning them um, so I've had some uh, titanium plates put in now on the right side so my full jaw is titanium now um, so just 
one of those, I guess, little things to be thankful for that I've still got full speech, um, although I'm in a lot of pain, especially with my teeth and my, my jaw. And I don't have any feeling on the right hand side, so my speech might sound a little bit funny and my smile a little bit crooked, but hey, I'm here and I'm breathing, so that's the most important thing. So it's really hard guys actually explaining just how debilitating having your right arm is. Um, but nevertheless, I managed to get a fire going, managed to collect some sticks, albeit hard, but it's really good, good choice at that time to go for uh, but no, it's a really good chance to go for nice dead timber. Um, like I said, if it sounds like a fire, it's good to burn. And while I was here, actually, I noticed on this birch log that I've been sat down on, there's uh, something which is really quite uncommon down this part of the world. You don't normally see this unless you're up in Scotland. And there's some horse's hoof fungus growing on this fallen birch. And there's two of them. And that's obviously a really good place to get amadou which is a great fire lighter. So I'll show you these, and yeah, really exciting. I'll leave them here and then probably come back and harvest one of them and uh, do a bit of processing. Really great for primitive skills. So here you have it, guys. Here are the uh, horse to funguses. And you can absolutely see why they're called that. They're really uncanny and look really similar. So this is where it's obviously growing out of the tree and the bark, and you've got some other little sites starting here. It's got really firm, solid kind of outer protection and armour and underneath it's quite smooth and rubbery and a, you know, quite a coffee kind of brown colour which I'll show you in a second. Now what you'd do is you'd rip that off and while it's fresh you'd want to take this skin armour off. You could, then you'll see within the bottom that there's a, a really dark brown leathery layer that runs all the way around this and that's what you'd want to harvest. But again, really nice to see and uh, something to leave for the future to come and come and take a little browse. It's good to leave it fresh until you're going to process it because they do dry out and go extremely hard. So, like I said, um, I wanted to go through, I will take this time to go through the Resport Raccoon 45 bag, just as a, a review. I've had it probably over a year and a half now, um, maybe two years. I can't quite remember exactly when I ordered it, but it's been a great bag ever since I have. And one of the great things about it is the versatility. So you can opt to go for it as a virgin bag, you can have one side pocket like I do, or you can attach another side pocket here. And these are actually about 12 and a half liters. So when you combine them together, if you think that's another, well, that would be another 25 liters on top. So it makes it into a, about a 70 liter backpack. So really, really amazing. Uh, it's got a fully adjustable system onto it. So even this top section, you can lift it up as high as you want. It has a snow sleeve inside there, which I'll show you shortly. And it's made out of really, really good quality material. It's um, Kadura and, you know, really tough. I've dragged this through some bushes, brambles, everything. And I'm still yet to get a tear or a snag on it. It's got really great cushioning. It's got carry handles for the back. It's got a, like a really good waist strap for it. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to review the bag with the arm situation at the moment but I intend to go through everything. So let's dig into it, really. Um, if I turn the bag around, we can start with what's probably one of the most impressive features to the bag, and it's this adjustable um, and movable back section. So as you're walking, this section, which your shoulders are hooked into, actually moves up and down ever so slightly. So it does take some of that bounce and the reverberation of the bag out of your, out of your shoulders and just means that every, all of your gear isn't just bouncing and jogging around with your constant body movement. Because it's a, a weight there that tends to sit in place and your shoulders and that back plate move instead, which is really you know, quite economical. It saves you a little bit of effort, I'm sure. And it just means that if you're finding that shoulder pads aren't in the right place, you can then adjust it. So you, like I said, you've got full adjustability. 
tucked in just behind here. You've got some hand straps on both sides and they're a good thick material. Again, Kodora kind of lanyards that are really heav heavily jutily stitched into the back and they've got some good rubber on, on there and you can pull those up. Um, another thing is this waistband which you can see is absolutely huge. It's, uh, it's great at distributing the weight on either side of your hips which is really handy and it's got full molly webbing all the way down it so you can put different attachments on as you'd like. I've opted for a, a Grimlock here which is great for carrying items, you can hang it down, you can put you know, rabbits, squirrels on there if you leg them, you could uh, anything, you know, whatever you wish. I've got two of those on there and then it comes with a good heavy duty clasp buckle in the middle. Um, and I can't fault it, if you're on the skinnier side it might be uh, right on its limit like it is for me but that's just more of a case of I need to eat a little bit more I think. So if I turn around the bag, like I said it's got this front hood section which again attaches by two clips and it has a velcro patch area here and I've actually got the hidden woodsman patch on there at the moment but you can put your own name on there, your rank number if you're in the military. Obviously this bag is designed for the Polish military hence why it's so utilitarian and it's got all of the webbing, it's a nice subdued olive green colour and it's heavy duty. So it's got a molly patch on top of there, it's got these two lanyard systems with buckles so you can put a roll through there or a jacket, anything really, water bottle. On the back side it has a really deep pocket that goes all the way to the front of that and in there normally I keep my tarp along with all the lines um, some lightweight pegs. I carry the DD super light tarp but I have in fact kept a 3x3 in there with no problems and again inside the hood or the lid there is also another pocket which is exactly the same size it's just a little bit narrower so that could be really good things for little snacks or a towel or something like that easy to grab and it's also kept dry by the top if we go into the bag, it has this lanyard that you can cinch everything up at the top with. And that covers over the snow sleeve, which, like I said, it's absolutely massive. So it extends the bag probably another third all the way up. So if, you're, if you ran out of gear space inside, you'd simply just keep stacking that all the way to the top. Undo the straps on the back of the lid, which would allow the lid to sit higher, and you could cinch it all back down. So really great idea and obviously if it's snowing the idea is that your gear is protected from that by this being rolled in on itself. Going into quant quantity of gear that you can fit into the bag, it's, it's, it's a fair size. Down to the middle section I can fit my whole arm and in the back there's a big large pocket that runs the whole way down. There's a really good firm back support as well which is inbuilt and integral and it has openings for hydration packs in the top. I usually carry in here my sleeping system in the back because it's split off at this area here. There is another essentially snow collar at that point which you can undo and turn it into one big chamber of a bag so the whole bag is one single compartment or at this area here which I'll show you shortly there is a, a barrier which means you can have this section as a cut-off point at the bottom. Now in the bottom I usually carry my sleeping bag in a dry bag and I put that in the in the bag either through the front section here which is the zippable section which I'll show you or you can put it in through the top through the snow sleeve drawstring that closed and then you've got a new bottom to then pack the rest of your gear on top. And it means if you wanted to get this thing out of here, you can undo this front section, whip it out, and all of your gear in here still stays exactly where it is. So really versatile, because you have a few sections, or you have one big compartment. Um, and another good feature on this zip, which I'll show you, is it's elasticated. So if you've got a big item in the back there, and you're trying to do up the zip, and I'm sure you guys know, when you're trying to do up a zip on a bag and there's something stuffed in there, the zip gets all that tension. And it can be really hard to pull that zip. 
Now, what Wii Sport have done, which is ingenious, and I don't know why other manufacturers haven't, maybe they've patented it, and I think if they have, good idea. Um, really, the elastic takes all of the tension of the item that's in the bag, so your zip is as free running if that is stuffed or if it is unstuffed. The zip just moves so freely because all of the pressure of that the bag is stretching is transferred into that elastic which is already under tension. So it's a clever idea really. Um, going on to the front of the bag, as you can see it's molly everywhere and even on the side pouches that still remains. So you could side pouch on side pouch on side pouch if you really wanted. And the side pocket, which again I mentioned are 12 and a half litres, have these straps at the back and this is just a normal molly fixing strap system. So you stitch this in. Um, a bit hard for me to show you but I'll bring the camera over shortly and show you a bit closer up but essentially you push this through the first one that comes back round and then you would loop through this first one on and then you stitch through the next one and stitch and it essentially binds the bag to the bag or the side pocket like as you can see here so all of those are stitched through the molly and it harnesses it there you then have two compression straps that go around the pouch with clips and that just holds everything in there nice and tight and another good feature about the bag is just the amount of straps on it they've all got little elastic bits so that you can roll up the excess and tuck them in which is really nice nice addition stops it all flapping around but there's tons of compression straps on there and tons of mounting points so if you once you've got your gear in there really tighten everything up get it nice and snug to your back and you know that nothing's going to catch tangle or fall out so my thoughts after having this for a year you know i love it i can carry gear for one or two or three days in there i have my sleeping system i'll usually de dedicate one whole pocket to food and 12 and a half liters it's surprising how much food you can fit in one of these um, i normally then have my kind of wash and cooking kit also attached via molly system to the front so that's another pouch with water in it it has my cup and my cookware in it and then in the bottom like I said I'll have my sleeping bag I'll carry my sleeping mat in there and then I will carry different pots and pans a first aid kit and I can quite comfortably fit quite a lot of gear and if you want to see what kind of gear I take out when I'm bushcrafting my other video which also features this bag um, you know check that out I'll make sure there's a link in the description and you'll probably see something up in one of the corners um, but yeah essentially if you want to see the bag fully fitted out and packed that's a good video for you to have a look at um, but I just thought I wanted to go through it here as it would come straight out of the box or out of the bag to you guys as an empty bag and it, it's it's really quite light you know i'm fairly injured at the moment and this is just dead weight i can't really use that arm at all but it's it's nothing it really is nothing um and you can see i've put certain little molly d rings on here um it's just really versatile another really nice feature i almost forgot is tucked in at the bottom here hidden pocket and inside it is a rain cover which is also the same colour and it's so handy and it's massive and it's got a draw cord on the bottom so you can really tighten that up and what I use this for most of often and more commonly than when it's raining is I'll put this over the bag um, again hard to do things a bit one handed but that would go over the bag and be cinched all the way around. Like so. And then at night time, if my bag's up against something or if it's a little bit damp, I don't have to worry about that ingressing into the bag. So yeah, really, really handy feature. And again, nice and subdued. You could leave that somewhere with a few branches in front of it. You wouldn't be too worried about someone spotting it. So I'll uh, leave it up to you whether to get one, but I would suggest if you are thinking about one and you've looked at other alternatives, it's not a bad shout. Uh, very similar to the Carry More Sabre. 
Yeah, just a bit more versatile and a bit more updated with the Molly webbing, I think. Um, and for versatility-wise, it's nice to have the flexibility of attaching your pockets wherever. You could have one at the front, two at the sides. You could have various different setups with it. And uh, I've looked at the 85 litre version of this bag and it is massive. I mean, I could probably fit in the bag. It is that big, it, was, it comes up to about here. It, it, it's magnificent. When I saw it, I, I thought I was preparing myself for uh, a big bag, but that was massive. So I'd say the 45, I think they do do a 65 as well. 65 might be good if you were thinking about a week long expedition, but if you're thinking three or four days, two or three days, if you're a lightweight kind of bushcrafter or a hiker, which most of us nowadays are, thanks, thankfully to uh, innovations, then I, I don't think you can go too far wrong. Really great quality, good and versatile, lovely colour, and uh, yeah, I haven't found a fault with it yet. It's got these elastic side pockets at the bottom, which are perfect, and on the 45 litre, you can actually just about squeeze a uh, small forest axe in there the head I mean and then have the handle coming up so I've been really really impressed with it there's one on both sides great for water bottles great for everything so let's get a few close-ups at the some of the finer details and points so you can have a little look So this is the bottom section guys, as you can see that folds down like a little tongue here and you've got this drawstring section, like I said, so that acts as another buffer point in there and it stops just under here, probably about midway point where my thumb is and that means you can get a nice sleeping bag in there sideways in a dry sack of course and then that way you don't have to worry about it getting wet, one of the benefits. Um, or, you know, whatever gear you want in there, I'm not telling you what has to go in there. Or you could undo this drawstring and if you pull that all the way to the side, it's a little bit harder than my shoulder being in this sling. I've only got use really of the hand from the, you know, movement wise it's fine, which I'm lucky and grateful for, but the shoulder's completely dead. Um, so you can open this sleeve up. And you can see that it's a full compartment all the way up the bag now. So then all your gear that you put in the top would come down into this section and you could access it that way as well. So really versatile and I, I like that feature. I generally tend to keep it as a little se section, like I said, because I keep my sleeping gear in there. And this is the elasticated section. You can see here that it's already elasticated and under tension. And if you imagine if there was a a bag or something pushing out. It's really hard to do the zips. This way, the zips are just free flowing, even when you've got something in there. And if a man with a bad shoulder can do it, you can too. So I've got the Wii Sport backpack on now. I managed to get it on with the sling and now it's all hooked in. <laughs> So, yeah, comfortable bag actually. As you can see, really nice subdued tone. And it sits nicely and firm to your back. You've got these adjustable straps here on the side, which you can tighten in and it brings it even closer. I won't do it to this side because obviously I don't want a lot of pressure on this shoulder, um, but it still works as a shoulder. <laughs> got the adjustable waist strap here which is adjustable on both sides and that means you can get it really nice and tight and it sits here just just on the hips which is a really good size so you can see there is that movement in the bag with the adjustable back system so the shoulder straps aren't moving but the bag is and that's really handy because if you were running or you know packing or something like that or just on undulating terrain it takes a little bit of the shock out of it you can see here I've got the side pocket on this side and it doesn't come out further than my arm. I've still got good clearance all the way back. If it had gear in it, it obviously would do. And on the other side, there's plenty of space where you could attach another 
um, pocket just behind there. So I'll turn around now so you can get a, a good view of it on my back. And obviously this is unladen. It has absolutely no gear in it. It's just an empty shell. So it's at its smallest that it probably could be. Obviously, I could tighten up every strap really, really firmly and get that really nice and flat to my back. But I wanted to show you guys just as it comes as an empty shell. So I hope this review has been kind of handy for you. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. But like I said before, if you're thinking about getting the bag, don't be put off. Um, it's really versatile. It's got a nice chest strap here as well, which I forgot to mention. Um, comes with this little hydration tube holder. So it's got loads of attachments. It's good quality, made for the military, and it's gonna last. So thanks ever so much. And you know, like I said before, I, I'm, unfortunately, the accident has happened but I shouldn't be too far away from filming some great content for you guys so really look forward to sharing it with you. Speak soon and until next time stay safe and so will I.